The uh, first annual award ceremony of the European Society for uh, Person-Centred Healthcare is in session. Thank you very much for attending. What I'd like to do is say a few words about why we're doing this and how we came to the conclusion about who should receive an award and, and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and who didn't manage to, to get the sufficient votes. Uh, the annual award ceremony of the Society is really uh, designed to recognise excellence in the field of um, person-centred healthcare at various levels, at the various level of uh, a platinum medal, a gold medal, a silver medal and a bronze medal uh, and two extra medals uh, which are the preserves uh, of the president and, and for, for our sins, the president and the senior vice president, which are the president's medal for excellence and also uh, the, the SVP's uh, medal for uh, excellence in particular uh, areas. In addition, we have two other prizes, uh, which unfortunately for the recipients don't come with medals, but are, are, are the, um, but which all come with certificates. And these are the book prize uh, and the, and the uh, essay prize. Uh, in order to have some idea about people working in the f what people working in the field of person-centred medicine, th who they thought should be recognised and who, at, at what level. Uh, I wrote out uh, via staff uh, to 2,000 uh, people uh, in the field, uh, and we put f and we just said, look, the criteria for excellence for the silver medal is this, for the bronze medal is that, for the platinum medal is something else, for the book prize is this. We gave them the criteria. Many of you here will have received um, th that email anyway, uh, uh, inviting your response with a nomination form. Uh, we had, in fact, if I may, uh, of the 2,000 odd um, um, invitations to nominate, we in fact had 323 uh, nomination forms returned. Uh, there were a wide range of people from, a from all over the world um, uh, nominated, but clear, wi which made life easier for me and for us, uh, clear winners uh, emerged in, 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 in each case, uh, which was, which was uh, uh, that much easier. Uh, so, um, that, uh, and, and these are what, what, which, what we will be conferring this evening. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is to ask the President, uh, before the award, to give the annual oration of the Society, uh, and after which we will proceed to the awards themselves, uh, and then uh, to dinner. President, if you would uh, assume the lectern, please. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Well, when I saw the uh, final arrangements for the day that we put in place, my heart sank because I knew that probably at about half past four I'd be dead on my feet, totally spaced out with all of the uh, information that had been given, looking at the, the papers that I knew that were going to be presented. Uh, and I have to tell you that I was completely wrong, and quite the opposite effect has happened, that um, rather than being tired, I'm now um, totally wound up and uh, very excited about what it is that uh, we've been talking about today and what it is uh, that the society um, is going to be able to achieve over time. And um, having, uh, you know, been part of a startup uh, organisation uh, myself, um, I think we'll be looking back to uh, the 2nd of July um, in 10 years' time thinking, can you remember that small first meeting we had um, in Madrid? And because I'll be ancient by then if I survive that length of time, um, we'll be the oldies looking at the new guys who are coming up and actually um, hopefully being... Uh, doing work which we couldn't even have imagined that they would be doing based on the, the work that all of you have been doing in order to lay the foundations um, for dissemination and for development. And later on today, tonight, as you know, we're going to be recognising uh, some of our colleagues um, for the work that they've been doing, but uh, nobody that has presented today or nobody who's involved in this work that was interested enough to come uh, is exempt from the... Um, I think the, the, the positive, uh, my son who's 23 and has a band, um, <coughs> would describe it as the vibe uh, that actually we all had today. So thank you all for the contributions that you've had to make. I'm not going to be long and I haven't got an oration as such because I think we've heard so much. What I want to do is just to try and pull together um, one or two themes that have emerged and I think one or two themes that perhaps we could look towards uh, going forward um, as the society develops. Um, we've had really um, considered and excellent presentations today based on high level theory philosophy, systems theory, epidemiology, clinical practice, phenomenology, all of that stuff that actually we need to have to embed, uh, I think, for the sustainability of our practice, a theory that we can then hang conceptual frameworks on and that we can then put into practice. And I think that 
was so exciting. Um, for me, I think the challenge as to me as a nurse uh, is to make visible to others who are involved in person-centred uh, care movement work we have done, uh, which I think, uh, are not me personally, but great people who I've always looked up to who have done, to make that visible so that we can add to the body of knowledge uh, of the, from the multidisciplinary team, um, who all of whom uh, have great uh, uh, impact on individual people with whom they meet. The other thing I think which is really um, very important for us to do is to um, really acknowledge some of the principles that were implicit, I think, in all that were being discussed. And that, I think, that came through was um, the principle of service. We're in a Catholic university uh, here, and I think that every presentation I heard today was focused on how can we better improve the care that we deliver to the people who, as clinicians, we wish to serve? Um, and how can we um, make that care as authentic as possible? And I was thinking of the principles of reciprocity. Uh, I was thinking of the principles of coming out of the darkness. Um, because I think as clinicians, sometimes we've hidden in the darkness, as well as um, not wanting to be seen, so not wanting to expose ourselves to uh, what we might have to deal with if we truly become person-centred with, uh, with, with people for whom we have responsibility. And then the other thing that became very clear to me today was that obviously as clinicians we have technical knowledge, um, we have clinical practice, we do, have, we, follow the, uh, we do follow the evidence, we've talked about that, but this whole concept of clinical judgment to my mind is the recognition that as individual people uh, we, as our, we are therapeutic givers of care ourselves. So uh, the very relationship that we have with our patients is therapeutic in its nature and it's how we behave that can have a good outcome or it can have a poor outcome. And it is so difficult to be consistent. The end of, I don't know how many patients you'd see in the average morning's surgery, but every patient, we want to strive to give the same standard to every single one of those patients. And uh, I once spent a morning with uh, uh, a, 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 a practitioner in the UK called a health visitor, um, public health nurse, health visitor, normally manage the under fives. Uh, uh, if you talk to me as a critical care nurse, I could think of nothing more boring in my whole life than to have to do a baby clinic with a health visitor. Um, it's one of the key planks of public health within the United Kingdom and if you don't have it, you know you don't have it. When I worked in the Gaza Strip, we have no public health nursing at all and the level of accidents, the level of, uh, of, of illness within children for very preventable reasons uh, was visible. And what was interesting is that we had more paediatricians than we knew what to do with, but the, the, the incidence of the public health issues did not go away. Uh, they were still manifest. And what struck me about that individual health visitor was that she uh, was totally consistent with the way in which she was giving information to uh, the mothers listening to what they had to say and that whole was able in a very short period of time, I mean seconds, to establish you know, a clinical relationship with that, uh, that, that mother and baby, uh, listen to what they have to say, reassure, you know, give information, signpost, whatever was needed. Uh, and that to me was something which I'd never appreciated before because I've never been in that environment. So I think using ourselves as vehicles for, uh, uh, for therapy for patients um, is something which again has come out of, of, of what's needed in terms of our, our, um, our responsibilities and being prepared for that and moving ourselves from feeling we've got um, I love this word, emotional labour, and moving that to being joyful, caring is something I'll take away uh, from this conference because I think for those of us who, you know, on a good day, okay, so we've had a good day today and, uh, you know, I really feel for the first time in the last two weeks I've managed to, to, to give the care I wanted to give and I had good outcomes. That's, you know, we don't get that every day uh, in practice, um, but I think that um, we might get it a bit more often. I certainly think now I'm going back to to change my approach from feeling that I'm just um, a martyr to the cause um, uh, rather than actually you know, enjoying the job that, that I do and, and enjoying and providing the support and care to, to my, our patients. So I'll sum up by just saying this. Today we have heard presentations of excellence. 
Um, nobody in this room that's attended has gone away without having learned something. I know if I, if I've, and I've learned more than most of you, but we've learned off each other and I feel that means that we're building so a society of peers um, and that we will co-create something which will be um, able to make its mark in not a small way uh, on, uh, on, on the planet, I guess. And I have grand, uh, grand expectations. Um, and when we go back to our places of work, to the reality of actually the daily sort of challenge uh, of not being in this rarefied uh, atmosphere, we've got this to fall back on. And we've got colleagues to link in with and to send emails to and to provide support to. Uh, and Andrew, I have to also uh, say uh, a very big thank you to you and your team. Because without your determination, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, and I think that's very important for you to hear and to accept. Uh, <coughs> and for somebody who has a lot to, uh, to, to do, and uh, we speak regularly, uh, often a uh, few times a week, um, I, I, the, the amount of concern that he'd had to make sure that this gathering uh, was successful, not successful uh, for him, but actually successful for the people who we, uh, we, we have the privilege of serving as clinicians uh, and as researchers and as writers and as academics. So I think it's really important that you acknowledge this. And I also would like to thank our colleagues at the university. Um, we really appreciate the fact that you provided this opportunity for us to be part of what you were doing. Um, also the opportunity to uh, learn in time from your students because I'm very interested to see what the outcomes of the program you're putting together is. And also I think most of us here would be very keen to contribute in uh, some way to actually supporting the promotion uh, of the work that you're doing here. So thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Um, it is greatly appreciated. Um, and finally, thank you to everybody here today for attending um, and uh, for making it uh, already day one. Um, yeah, for giving the vibe. I think that's, uh, that's really, really excellent. And thank you very much indeed. I'm going to stop because uh, we've got some other important things to do. Thank you. Uh, President, thank you very much indeed for uh, your oration. Um, we now commence the uh, actual awards uh, of the Society's medals and prizes. The winner of the Platinum Medal by large measure in the consultation exercise was Professor Kristina Puchalski, uh, who is Professor of Medicine and Palliative Care and Director of the Center for Spiritual and Religious Care at the University of Washington, D.C. in America. And this, uh, the uh, Platinum Medal of the Society is conferred for to uh, Professor Buchalski for uh, excellence in integrating spiritual and religious care alongside um, medical and psychological and social assessment as an integrated package, not something separate, but integrated. Unfortunately, uh, Professor Buchalski cannot be with us today because she's en route to, to Tokyo. Um, she will be with us next year at the Society's second annual meeting. And so, President, I'd be very grateful on behalf of the Society if you would confer the Platinum Medal on Professor Christina Puchalski uh, in absentia. Yeah. The winner of the gold medal by large measure uh, is not given to an institution, uh, uh, to an to a individual per se, uh, but to an institution, uh, the one we in fact are in. Uh, the uh, gold medal is given uh, for excellence in building a per uh, from scratch, from the beginning, from year one. Uh, uh, for building a person-centered uh, medical school. Uh, so the gold medal um, is uh, awarded to the uh, uh, Universidad Francisco de Vitoria, and I'd be grateful if Dr. Caballero, Dean of Medicine, would approach the um, uh, platform to accept the uh, gold medal on behalf of uh, the university and, and your team. Perhaps for, for, for and the certificate.
winner of the Society's Silver Medal is Professor Linda Shields, who is a professor of uh, medicine and nursing at uh, Townsville in, in, uh, the, um, in Australia. Uh, unfortunately, Professor Linda Shields, due to other commitments, can't be with us this year, but again will be with us next year. And the Society's Silver Medal uh, is presented to Professor Shields for excellence in child and family-centred care. President, I wonder if I could ask you to confer the Society's Silver Medal to uh, Professor Linda Shields uh, in absentia. The Society's Bronze Medal is awarded to uh, Professor Drossi Stoyanov, who is a uh, full professor of uh, psychiatry, medical psychology and person-centred medicine at the Medical University of Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Uh, the Bronze Medal is awarded to Professor Stoyanov for innovations in person-centred undergraduate med uh, medical education uh, in Eastern Europe. And so, uh, uh, President, if I could ask you to, uh, uh, to vest Professor Stoyanov in the University's Recognitionem and to award the Bronze uh, Medal, please. Uh, we now move to the President's own medal uh, for excellence in the uh, person-centred management of achronic uh, disease. The President's medal was awarded to Professor Paolo Pozzili, who will be with us tomorrow to talk about uh, his innovations uh, in the person-centred management of the protochronic illness, uh, diabetes. Professor Pozzili is a uh, professor of diabetes and endocrinology in the Università Campus Biomedico in Rome. Uh, and will be delivering uh, um, a presentation tomorrow. Uh, President, uh, in view of Professor Pozzili's inability to be with us today, but in view of his attendance tomorrow to give a lecture, I wonder if you would agree to confer your medal on Professor Pozzili immediately prior to his lecture tomorrow here in this theatre. We move now to the Vice President's and final medal uh, for uh, excellence in advancing the fundamental and applied philosophy of person-centred healthcare. The medal is awarded to Professor Michael Lochlin, um, uh, who is uh, recently, in fact, achieved his full professorship in applied philosophy at Manchester Metropolitan University. And I wonder, um, President, if you would confer the university's uh, recognitionem and the, uh, and the Vice President's uh, medal for uh, excellence in applied philosophy of person-centred healthcare. We move now to uh, the award of the book prize. Uh, um, uh, I'd like to, to share with colleagues that, the, that this was awarded for the publication, the recent publication of the uh, handbook, I emphasize handbook, uh, of systems and complexity in health. Uh, before reading this book myself, um, I had the idea that a handbook was no more perhaps than 100, 120 pages. This particular handbook is um, 1,000 pages, costs about 1,000 euros, and is about three kilograms uh, in weight. <laughs> Uh, President, I, ask you, uh, I would ask uh, uh, Dr. Carmel Martin and Dr. Joachim Sternberg to approach the podium to receive jointly, uh, as joint co-editors of the book, uh, the Society's 2014 Book Prize. Uh, thank you. Probably will still be a thousand pages, so uh, <laughs> can't, can't relieve you from that burden. And s slightly less weight, right? Okay. 
And we come now to the award of the Society's final prize in this 2014 award ceremony. Uh, the Essay Prize goes to Dr. Margot Lindsay uh, of, the Univers of University College uh, in London. Uh, Dr. Lindsay has completed no less than 10 reviews for the European Journal of Person-Centred Healthcare uh, in the current year. And um, uh, President uh, Dr. Lindsay cannot be with us this evening uh, due to other commitments uh, and a measure of illness. Uh, and I would ask you to uh, award the uh, Essay Prize to Dr. Lindsay in absentia. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the uh, 2014 uh, Annual Award Ceremony of the European Society for Person-Centred Healthcare. Uh, we now can move to a, uh, a cover, a uh, Spanish Champagne uh, reception, to which I think we will we'll, we'll be led by our distinguished colleagues on the, on the panel. Thank you all very much indeed. <laughs>